Okay. Good evening and welcome to the February 19th Town Council meeting. We have uh, Boy Scout Troop 50 here to observe uh, town government. So I'd like to ask them if they would please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, gentlemen. If the town clerk could please take attendance. Councilor Breton. Here. Councilor Forrest. Here. Councilor Hurley. Here. Councilor Latina is not here yet. Councilor Lesser. Here. Councilor Rell. Here. Councilor Spinelli will not be here tonight. Deputy Mayor Martino. Here. And Mayor Morin Bella. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no hearings this evening, so our first order of business is public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. If you please um, state your name and address. Is there anybody in the public who'd like to speak? Come on up. If you would just come to the podium and make sure you speak into the microphone, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You need a little moral support. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Just pull the microphone down. There you go. Thank you. I'm sorry, repeat. But oh, just if you would state your name and your address, please, and then you can make your remarks. Uh, Geraldine Maiorini from Weathersfield. And your street address? Prospect Street. Thank you. Do you have to identify yes. yourself? Oh. Alan Close, uh, Partridge Drive, Rocky Hill. And I'm Peter Swenke, 75 Center Street. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're here because um, we want to bring to your attention regarding uh, Follybrook Boulevard in terms of uh, perhaps um, um, there's an ordinance uh, that we cannot park overnight, but we're wondering whether that ordinance can be amended for that section of town um, so the tenants and their guests would be able to. Um, and the reason is because, as you know, the complex has grown tremendously, and we have um, many guests and we don't want those guests to be taking the spots of our tenants. So, um, and I have spoken to Ms. Uh, Lieutenant Mitney at length, and he suggested that we come to you and present this to you, if, there could, if that ordinance can be amended. And the reason why we're also asking for that is because of a safety reason for our tenants. We have a number of um, single parent, um, and we don't want them to be walking home when it's cold, with their children, their uh, groceries, um, and many of them have called and they're very, you know, concerned about walking in the ice and in danger. But now, since the town has uh, built a solid white line in that whole area from uh, Jordan Lane onto Victoria Road, uh, we thought we'd ask you if uh, tenants and guests can just park right in front of their homes. It would also be a, um, a crime issue, too because rather than hiding behind some of the parking areas in the back and then they have to walk all the way to the apartment, um, that would also would make them feel safer to get home. And also we have tenants who work around, you know, at night, early in the morning they have to go to work or come back very late at night. So that would give them a better place to park uh, because most of the buildings are along the street and they'll be able to see their car, feel more comfortable coming in and out. And I would think that both in terms of safety, crime, and uh, injury, because I wouldn't want them to be walking in a snowstorm or in ice as we've been having and, you know, fall and so forth for their health. So under those conditions, I'm just wondering whether um, the council would uh, consider amending your ordinance. Okay, thank you for the comments. Um, we don't engage in back and forth here, mm -hmm. but we can certainly um, ask the town manager to look into parking situation in that area. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella?
Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. <clears throat> just want to speak a little bit about the uh, grant money for the dump truck. Um, just so you're aware, the little follow-up. The pictures that you received in your packets um, for the photographs of the rust in the truck, just want everybody to be aware that that's the dump body that you're looking at that is rusted. It's not the frame, it's not the chassis of the truck, it's the dump body portion. Uh, doesn't have anything to do with safety. It's not like the frame's gonna ride out and the truck's gonna break in half. <clears throat> There's also a picture of the exhaust system that appears to be rusty. It's pretty common, most exhaust systems are rusty like that. And it's also an item that can be readily replaced not an item that's hard to obtain. <clears throat> I did some looking into the fact that the Sterling trucks are no longer manufactured. Um, several years ago, the condition was much worse and it was very difficult to get a lot of the Sterling common parts. We're not talking about the engine, the transmission, the drivetrain. Those type of components are readily available. Uh, we're talking about things that are particular to the cab, to the body. Uh, if you need to buy a door handle, you couldn't find them. If you needed to buy a windshield wiper motor mechanism, you had trouble finding them. Um, there have, in the last couple of years, there have been a big improvement in parts availability for Sterling, a lot of aftermarket parts. So that's really not a, a big issue. Um, the bigger issue that I saw was the uh, finance department's spreadsheet that they attached. And <clears throat> you can see where the amount of financed items is just tremendously ramping up. In the past year, you know, we put on those two fire trucks for a million two, something approximately a million two. Um, there was a handful of other items. Um, all that were not budgeted. These are items that got thrown in. Uh, the turf was in that category. It was not a budgeted item. And <clears throat> we just continued to increase the amount of spending on our town credit card. And I think that needs to be reduced drastically. Um, from looking at the way this flows out, I would say you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, incur any additional leases for at least another four or five years. Wait for it to start getting paid off before you go out and buy something else. The, uh, you know, the grant seems good at, at the onset. Someone's gonna give us $50,000 that we don't have. But when you look at the realistic, what's happening is you don't really need the truck. Sure, it would be nice to replace it. You're gonna replace it eventually, but right now, you don't need the truck. So you get 25% off. You still have to come up with $150,000. And I just don't think we're in a position to do that. When you throw in the financing that, um, and it does say it's preliminary for discussion, but you throw in the financing, 38,000 a year for five years, it's 190. You're paying 160 for the truck, so you're paying thirty thousand dollars to finance this. Seems high to me, but that's up over seven percent. But anyways, you're paying thirty thousand dollars to finance it. You're only getting fifty. So what's the benefit to twenty? Uh, I think there's other options. You could possibly look at replacing the dump body. Uh, the one that was on there was obviously steel. They now produce the dump bodies in stainless steel, corrosion resistant steel, so you don't have the corrosion problem over time. Um, and I believe that's what's specced out in the new truck. So you could go out and buy a new dump body, put it on the existing Sterling truck, and the truck only has 50,000 miles on it. It could conceivably go for many more years. And uh, when you eventually do scrap it out, take the stainless steel dump body off of it and put it on the next truck that you buy. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I, I too looked at the agenda and the portion of uh, the rust on these portions of this truck. And, and I have to agree with Tom, uh, you, 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 you don't need to get rid of the truck. And, if, and I didn't realize that the parts were still readily available for the Sterling. And if that's the case, I, I don't think you should be jumping into another vehicle. As Tom suggested, probably the dump, the dump portion should be replaced with something that won't rust. But looking at this, no. Yeah. You got a lot of years left on this vehicle. And I would and and, and if you're gonna get fifty grand and it's gonna cost you two hundred plus, uh, where's the other money gonna come from? And Tom mentioned again something that I was gonna talk about was the the schedule for the leases. I've been talking to you about these leases for some time now. I call these leases and all of your other financing eternal life programs because that's exactly what it is, eternal life. You never can go back unless you're ready to bite the bullet on leasing. Once you started it and you had some savings in those first few years by borrowing, now in order to stop it, and as interest rates do go up, you're going to want to stop because it's going to go way beyond what you want to spend or what we should be spending for financing. But what happens is you're going to have to still pay those off and buy new vehicles as you go along, such as police cruisers, and you're going to have to pay cash for those. And it's going to really be something tough to bite into. It's a shame that the people who suggested this go on lease did what they did and put the entire town in, into this kind of a risk. Because going on lease in this kind of work, this kind of business is not good at all. So I, I would recommend you turn down the $50,000 to get buying a new vehicle, truck, dump truck, and, and get that old Sterling back into, into working order. I mean, I keep seeing parts or... Uh, Items that are in your public works group that have to be constantly replaced. You, you, don't, you don't believe in hanging on to things and making them last. Maybe because you're spending other people's money. Maybe that's why you do it. But you're, you're, getting it, you're getting us in a big bind financially by doing this. And also, reading, reading the article in the paper about Lamont seeks a debt Diet. Are we going to go on a debt diet? I think that's what Tom is talking about. A debt diet. I'm talking about a debt diet. We shouldn't be going out uh, continuing to borrow. And our taxes continue to climb. And, and, and there's no end to it. Again, eternal life programs. You know, you're going to buy that farm up on... Uh, Wilkett Hill, was, what's it called? Highland Street? Highland and in, uh, in Collier. And I keep sending you and I keep talking to you about properties that are selling in, in our general area. And there's such a difference in the price per acre that you're paying or going to pay for that Wilk the Keisha farm versus what regular land is selling for. And actually, we've only seen a few parcels even sold over the, since this all began, since the summer. I've only found a few parcels that sold. I continue to see more properties coming on the market and they're not selling. Things are not moving. I don't know why. I mean, I, I think I know why, but I, who, who wants to pay taxes on property that just lays there? Get rid of it. Who wants to live in the state of Connecticut? Get out of here. Let's get rid of it. It's that kind of thing. Now, I just sent you a number of properties to go look at. A couple of them were brand new. Only a few 
within a week or a couple of weeks uh, on the market. I mean, down in uh, Middlesex County, was it uh, down, uh, down in Berlin on the Chamberlain Highway, there's 17.4 acres that just came on the market for $275,000. That's a going farm. You're buying a farm that doesn't even work. If you'd finish up, please, for $75,000. And, 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 you know, at $275,000, divide that by the 17 acres, it comes out to $15,700 an acre. And Thank you, Mr. Young. And you're planning on spending $75,000. i will be back, madam. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak? Okay. Seeing none, we will move into council reports. Are there any council members who have reports this evening? Deputy Mayor? Uh, in the past two weeks, the uh, Capital Improvement Advisory Commission finished their work and came up with uh, a budget for the coming year for CIP projects. Uh, that's being put together by the town engineer and forwarded to uh, planning and zoning for the 824 referral as per schedule. And they stayed within the uh, $900,000 budget range that has been the same for the past few years. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I have three quick things. First, uh, the Hunger Action Team, which meets every month to come up with strategies to help those in our community <coughs> who are food insecure or hungry, uh, wanted me to make a little announcement uh, that every other Wednesday uh, from 9 to 9.30 at 55 Lancaster Road is the mobile food chair. So uh, it's a truck with food where residents uh, can get uh, food. There's no cost to this. And we currently have about 100 people who use that service, but it's open and we want to spread the word that that's available. Secondly, last week the Veterans Committee met, and I may have reported, but they've uh, appointed two co-chairs, uh, Karen Opper and Doug Shipman. And a couple things that we're working on, again, is the 75th anniversary of D-Day, which will be June 6th. 2019 partnering with the high school it'll be a big celebration on the high school football field that day with about 20 to 25 veterans and also uh, the veterans committee has decided to do a retreat to do some other strategic planning and lastly the human rights commission met they're also a new committee uh, not quite as far along as the veterans committee and they're still trying to figure out kind of what um, will be their main objectives and their goals and their starting a little strategic planning themselves. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Anybody else? Council Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Just briefly, there, uh, there were a bunch of new commissioners that were appointed by the town manager to the Economic Development Improvement Commission, which was recently uh, reformed commission. And uh, the economic, uh, the EDIC, the Economic Development and Improvement Commission, Excuse me, the new commissioners were to the redevelopment agency, and the Economic Development Improvement Commission will be meeting on Thursday to outline a plan to work together with the newly appointed redevelopment agency to figure out how they should be working together and time schedules, um, uh, which will, I think, likely move the Economic Development Improvement Commission from an afternoon meeting to an evening meeting. Evening meeting. And so the, the commissioners, which some of them serve on both committees, and work out a good plan for moving forward and seeing if we can redevelop our town and increase our tax base and, and uh, facilities throughout the town. So it's kind of some new uh, energy coming through and uh, was recently appointed. So thank you, Kathy, for those appointments. Thank you. Councillor uh, Bratton. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so this is, I just wanted to make an announcement. The Bike Walk uh, Stakeholders Committee is meeting again this month. This is twice this month. Um, on February 28th, right here in these chambers at 6.30. Um, and the public is welcome to, the whole purpose of the group, for those who don't know, is to make, uh, help make Weathersfield more bike walk friendly. And there's all kinds of ideas, um, and there's been a lot of studies done and research done on, on the layout of where we'd like to, um, you know, in, put some routes together, bike routes, and make it more safe um, in areas of the town. So, um, like I said, everybody's welcome, and now's a time, really great time to, to be part of it and to provide some input as to sort of where we go from here. So thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we'll move into council comments. Any council members have comments this evening? 
No council comments? Okay. Um, Kathy, this is your last meeting up here with us, so I'm just going to take a minute and publicly thank Kathy Bagley. She has been um, really fabulous interim town manager. We appreciate all of her time and all of the work that has gone into keeping the town running. Um, and I'm so happy that we'll continue to have Kathy in town. She'll be back in her job as Park and Rec Director and Director of Social and Youth Services. So at our next meeting, we will have um, Gary Evans here as the new town manager. And Kathy, I hope you'll be here too um, <laughs> to make sure we're all on track moving forward. But thank you for all you've done in the last six months. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. And now on to town manager's report. Do you have anything to report? No, I don't have anything to report. It's, I'm leaving. <laughs> there you go. It's certainly been a pleasure, and you've heard me say this a lot, that without the staff in the building and in the town to assist me, it, they made my job easier. And I appreciate all the help and assistance from the council members, too. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, town Clerk's communication. Do you have anything this evening? Yes, I do. I have on May 9th, we're going to have a shred event from noon to 3.30, and it's going to be at the Pitkin Community Center. We're all invited. You are all invited. <laughs> the town is invited. Whoever would like to come and get their document shredded. And that information will be on the website? It is on the website already. Great. Good. Thank you. Okay, moving into council action. Um, acceptance of resignations from boards and commissions. I believe we have one tonight. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Um, I make a motion to accept the resignation from the Central Region Tourist, the Tourism District of Katie Sullivan, 79 Wright Road, whose term was 9-17-18 to 6 21 Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any council comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, appointments. I don't believe we have any this evening. No. Uh, we'll move to unfinished business. Do we have a motion? Um, motion to take the tax deferment program off the table and take no further action. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, is there, um, Kathy, do you want to bring us up to speed on this? Sure. This program um, had been approved by the state legislature if towns on a voluntary basis wanted to offer um, federal employees that went through the um, government shutdown that began on December 22nd to allow to give them a, um, the ability not to pay their taxes right away. Um, what since happened is the shutdown has gone, is over at this point in time and the town did not receive any requests for that program, so I'm recommending at this time not to move forward with it. Is there any council comment on that? Councilor Rell. No, thank you, uh, Kathy, for uh, the explanation of that. I know there were a lot of questions. I'm not going to ask any questions this time because two <laughs> weeks ago we did ask the questions, and uh, we did table it. Um, I think it's just a, a smart idea not to, uh, um, you know, just simply jump in because others are doing it. Um, it is a unfortunate situation that the shutdown did occur. Uh, hopefully it won't, <clears throat> excuse me, occur in the future. But if it does, maybe this could be something that we would look at and you know, do a little bit more due diligence beforehand so that uh, um, affected parties could be uh, helped by it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. We move into other business. Historic Document Preservation Program Grant. Do we have a motion? Yes. Um, I move to, uh, the move to have the interim man town manager approve the town clerk as the designated person to sign and submit the Historical Documents Preservation Program Grant for $7,500 um, $7, for the town of Wethersfield. Second. We okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy? Bonus. I know. I know you <laughs> wish it were 75. I know. <laughs> that would have been nice. For sure. This is a, an annual program where the town clerk is able to apply to the state for a grant to get targeted money to help preserve our historic records. And we've been fortunate over the past several years to get this, and, and this helps us continue to preserve all the, both the land records and the 
records that the town clerk keeps. Thank you. Dolores, did you have anything to add? No, that's pretty much it. It's okay. the money, I, part of the money that I collect for the state of Connecticut is, this is, they are letting us get some of it back. Thank you. Are there any council comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Next is police video security system. Do we have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the purchase of the, of the video security system for street cameras in the police department building at a cost of $659,364.62 using the asset forfeiture funds. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy? This is uh, an opportunity for our police department to purchase this equipment with their asset forfeiture funds. Um, it's something that um, the police department has been working on for a long time, and this really would be uh, putting a camera system on both the, our Silas Dean Highway and the Berlin Turnpike. And as part of that process, it would also work with um, having a feed right into the Hartford Central Police District where they already have their camera systems and video systems set up. The chief is here tonight to give you more of an explanation on it, but the second piece of this is both that part of the grant and also the grant to upgrade the cameras in the police department themselves. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. Thank you for coming. You didn't think we'd let you stay in the back, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm here to answer any kind of questions, but I'll, I'll just go into a little bit more of the detail of the system that we're talking about. And we have been working on this for a long time. It's something that I think will enhance the safety and security of our businesses and our residents in Wethersfield. In fact, I think it's going to be so great that we may <clears throat> actually deter crime from in the future because of the fact that we'll have this system, the state-of-the-art system that Hartford already has. I also worked it out with the other six towns, the six other chiefs of police around Hartford, and we're all going to be going into this eventually. Um, and we'll have a, a pretty secure metropolitan area around Hartford, Hartford and around Hartford. Um, it's just small in the beginning, and it's only going to be 12 locations. And uh, the 12 locations, the cameras that are there, it's not just one camera. In that box will be multiple cameras that actually have a 360 degree view and one of the cameras in there will actually have a pale um, pan tilt zoom so we can actually look in on whatever if there's an accident if there's um, a robbery or whatever occurs we'll be able to actually zoom in on that uh, and it will actually enhance officers safety going responding to those type of scenes too so there's a lot of aspects to this. It's a, it's a lot of money. It's something that one of the reasons why I've been relatively conservative with the asset forfeiture money through these years is because this was the plan from, from way back when. Um, Hartford, uh, what happened with Hartford, Hartford had a hodgepodge of cameras and systems. Some of the business, uh, like uh, Park Street Business Association, actually uh, made purchases of cameras and gave them to Hartford to to utilize, uh, and there was other cameras around through the system, through the city. What what Hartford did was they realized that it just it didn't work well having all those different kinds. So what they did was they contracted with the company, this, this same company Vulcan, out of South Windsor, and redid the entire system in Hartford under one platform. It's called a milestone platform. That's the software that runs this system. That changed everything, and they've solved some really serious crimes in Hartford, including a homicide within two hours that probably would never have been solved. One of the most the better examples, too, was there was an attempted kidnapping of a 10-year-old girl uh, downtown one day, and uh, the, the only description that the girl could give was that it was a white van. There's actually software, it's called uh, Brief, Cam, Brief Cam, that will filter out uh, all this, all extraneous stuff. So even though they might have a thousand cars going through an intersection, it will actually filter out every vehicle except a white van. They caught that guy within 
less than a couple of hours. And I don't know how many of more he would have done in the future if it wasn't for that apprehension. And again, it was all through the cameras. It's almost like, I know I, I almost hate saying this, it's almost like television, you know, because all the years I've been saying, you know, real life isn't like television, but this has really brought us around to where we now be able to solve crimes, prevent crimes, um, and I think it will really enhance the, the safety and security of everybody in this town. It's what I've been trying to attain for many years now, and this will be my legacy, I hope. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions, and then I'll, sure. I'll ask counselors if they do. Will, the, will this system interface with the existing cameras? Don't we already have some cameras in, in town? No, those are the LPRs, okay. license plate readers. Okay. Uh, no, they're two, two, two completely different things. Um, the LPRs are great, and we're using them, and, and we have solved crime with LPRs. In fact, I wish I had brought the list. There was a, there's a whole list of, of mm -hmm. cases that we've solved with those. In fact, I just heard on the radio, uh, East Hartford had a car stolen out of a driveway that was warming up with 16 firearms in it. And they checked our LPRs to see if it came into Weathersfield. Uh, so far, so good. But those are the, that's the kind of stuff that we can do with the technology that's out there today. Uh, um, and then my other question is, can you speak to um, any maintenance costs or costs sure. that we will then, you know, once we purchase these through the asset forfeiture funds, then and the maintenance and so forth will be the responsibility of the operating budget. So if you could just talk to those costs. Yes. Okay. Uh, the maintenance costs are relatively minor. Relatively. Uh, the first year, there's zero cost. This After that, the milestone platform that uh, the software that runs the whole system will be $97 per camera per year. So 12 cameras times $1,200. Um, it's on a three-year basis. We'd have to pay it once every three years. Um, the Vulcan, what they're, they don't have a maintenance plan. There will be no maintenance on that. And I, I like the reason why they have for no maintenance is because with a maintenance fee, you're paying maintenance on, on something that may not break, but you're still paying the maintenance fee. What they do is they suggest that we put aside in the budget every year between about $8,000. If we use that money to fix a camera or replace a camera after the first year, so be it. Uh, if we don't, then that money just gets turned back into the town at the end of the year. So it's, it's a much better system. I like that system. And they're so confident in their product, and it's one of the reasons why it's probably more expensive, too, is the fact that we won't have those breakdowns. That's the thing that kills these systems. And that was the problem that Hartford was having in the beginning. The, the pool, I don't know if you remember the pool, the Keeney pool, that camera system broke down, and that, that boy drowned in that pool, and they didn't know it. With this system, things like that shouldn't happen. And what I'd like to do is be able to do in the future is to build out that system. You know, we start with 12 cameras on the Silestine and the Berlin Turnpike and eventually maybe start cutting across so we have more cameras going throughout town and we'll be able to uh, catch other th things that occur. Millwoods Park would be a good example in the future. Yeah, I, th I think this is a great idea, and I, I definitely am supporting, you know, this proposal tonight, especially since we're able to use the asset forfeiture funds yeah. to purchase them. I mean, it's a, a definite win for the town. Yeah, it's not something I would have ever been able to get out of the budget. Yeah. Thank I know you. That. <laughs> <laughs> I know Thanks that. So much. Yeah. Are there council members that have questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, Chief, you said the 12 surrounding towns from Hartford are going to be Six. Six, rather. Uh, will it be expanding out beyond that? For example, will Rocky Hill and them? Uh, they would be into? perfectly welcome to join in. But I we're actually going to tap into Hartford's system. Hartford's last camera is on Weathersville Avenue. And I believe from our tower in the back of the police station, we'll actually have a direct line of sight to that camera. If not, then we'll have to maybe think about you know, fiber or something like that. But once we were into that system, that's, and that really is the backbone of the system because what we need is Harford has three full-time employees. They're called crime analysts, and that's all they do is watch those cameras all day. Well, we don't have that capability. What I'm hoping to do is, again, for the future, is that the six towns are involved and we contribute towards one full-time person for the six towns. That would be relatively cheap. 
uh, and we'll have a person there that will be able to run our systems all the time. I don't have the staff to run a system like this. We'll have the capability of going back and looking at something, but to actually uh, pre you know, predict crime, if you want to call it that, uh, then that's, that's really an, a, an excellent aspect of that system. Look, as I'm just visualizing it, it doesn't get expanded out. If somebody comes from, say, Hartford through Wettersfield and continues on into Rocky Hill, you don't know where it goes from that point. No, but if, let's say, Rocky Hill, you know, you know, just give you an example. Let's say Rocky Hill has an armed robbery of, a, of a, one of the motels on the Salestine Highway. Well, um, if they go north, we're going to pick them up on our cameras and we'll be able to track them all the way up. Plus, we have the LPRs to, to actually get the license plate so it, it will have, each system is built upon the other and it will help us solve crimes in the future even if it's for another jurisdiction okay, thank you. because the next time they may not go down as far as rocky hill and what i'm hoping for i mean the ultimate goal of this is that we're doing so well with solving these crimes that people won't come into weathersfield to commit the crimes anymore of course that's pie in the sky kind of thinking but i don't see why it wouldn't work Thank you. Councilor Hurley. Hi, Chief. Hi, Mike. Um, how do you protect the privacy of residents, normal residents that get caught on these cameras? Say Harford has access, other towns have access. I don't know what privacy, because this is all in the public. It's on a pole in the, on the Silasine Highway. Again, I'll give you an example. We had an officer to work on a traffic job at uh, Silasine in Maple, and he saw a car go by that, that just for some reason or other, it stuck in his mind. It was a green Pontiac. Uh, it was just this weird kind of a Pontiac. I can't remember. It was like a GT something or whatever. And it just caught his eye. He remembered it. It was dark green. We had a, um, a shoplifting robbery down at one of the, like, Marshalls. And the, so whoever described the car described the car like that car. Well, he was there. He saw it. He was able to remember it. And he actually remembered a part of the marker plate, which eventually solved that crime. That's all these cameras will be doing, which are, with a lot better accuracy and a lot better uh, sight. How long do you keep? 30 days. 30 days, and then it's gone? Yes. The, the system couldn't hold any more than that. Okay. And, that's, and those are pretty big servers, because that's a lot of video coming through. All right. Thank you. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I think this is an important crime-fighting tool, and I'm looking forward to um, seeing us utilize this. But And I'm, I'm glad it's not part of the operating budget. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a question on the deterrence. So we've had, as you know better than us, kind of an increase in crime, particularly the break-ins, car yeah. break-ins, but other forms of crime in the last couple of years here in Wethersfield. How would you see this as potentially deterring crime, particularly like break-ins, and would you... Uh, I would say promote or publicize or market that we have cameras as a way to deter that you know oh they have cameras on. so tell, talk a little bit about the deter deterrence sure. you mentioned okay um, first off Hartford didn't tell anybody about their cameras for a long time then they did um, you do get some of the naysayers that come out about that again some of the questions about the privacy I don't see how it could possibly be anything about privacy because it's out in the public it's out on the street. I don't know how much uh, expectation of privacy you have driving along the Silasine Highway. And if you're not committing any crimes, you shouldn't have anything to worry about whatsoever. We're not looking for any other reason than if some, a crime occurs. We had a bank robbery not too long ago right over here on the Silasine Highway that was pretty bad. Um, that would have helped us track that car much better than it actually turned out. And it was a dash cam that solved that crime for us. So, like I said, one system builds upon the other. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I'm hoping, I'm not saying we're going to go out and advertise on the front page that don't come to Weathersfield because we have cameras, but what I am thinking is that eventually, and this is kind of the reputation that we had for many, many years ago that we depended on. That's one of the reasons why Weathersfield has the lowest crime rate of all six ring towns, is that we have, the, the police departments had a reputation of being aggressive of stopping cars, of looking for criminals, of stopping crime before it even happens, some cases, and after it happens. What, what I'm saying is, is that reputation is invaluable. And what I'm hoping is that this 
the camera system will enhance that reputation. We'll never get crime free. I mean, that's just not possible. But the more tools that we have in our belt, the better off we're going to be in the future in regards to crime. And believe it or not, I, I truly believe that criminals pay attention to that kind of stuff. If they get caught in Weathersfield two or three times, they're not coming back. They'll go someplace where they won't get caught. And uh, unfortunately for them, but good for us. Got it. Thank you. Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> Chief, welcome, of course. Hi, man. Can you give us a little description about how these cameras are mounted? Do they go on uh, you know, at intersection poles? Are they on buildings? How big well, are they? What do they sort of look like? There were no pictures sort of of the device. They're, um, they're in a cylinder that will, that was one of the major stumbling blocks to this all along was the fact that um, how, we, how are you going to put them up there? I had a battle with Eversource and then the same battle with Frontier on the LPRs for two years, two and a half years. And there's a state law that says that every municipality gets 12 inches of game free. They tried to the charge us, they tried to... The, hmm. Believe me, it was a battle and a half. I tried to work with DOT because I thought they might be, uh, would like this system because they would actually be able to watch the Salicine Highway themselves for traffic, for accidents, and for things like that. But DOT was not easy to work with. In fact, they don't return calls. I, don't, I can't tell you how many calls they made. Finally, uh, uh, Derek um, called somebody that he knew, and uh, they just said no. Okay. So then I find Where out. <laughs> then I find out that I didn't know this before, and I guess it's relatively recent too. Maybe that's why. Is that the street lights? Those arms, we own those, mm. and the street lights. Especially now. And I, right. And I talked to uh, the company, and they can use those arms to put mount the cameras. They'll be in a cylinder. There'll be multiple cameras in those cylinders. Um, it's not that big. It's not. Those cameras are um, high resolution cameras that that can see pretty well and pick up plates and descriptions of cars and it's it's a pretty pretty good system i wish i could show you i've seen harford's system i've seen how it works and what they can do with it um it's absolutely phenomenal so it's a cylinder type device yeah i think i have a picture mounted on a street pan, street lamp i didn't see a picture of it in, in the past yeah because it's actually from another company okay. but it's it's not much different than what you'd see on a pole anyways you know almost like a um much smaller than the, 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 the trans, what do you call that, um, transformer. It's much smaller than that, but kind of along those same lines. Got it. So I, I don't know if you were here for the meeting, but maybe you know, a meeting or two ago, we were talking with uh, Derek and I talked to the town manager because we also have funds that are looking to be allocated for various intersection improvements. And, and around town, we certainly yeah. see there's new poles and stuff going up. Right. So it would seem that in the future, I would ask that you at least coordinate when we do intersection improvements that that might be the type of thing that we have sort of I, complete intersections in a way. I talked to Derek about that before. And the only caveat to this is, and that's one of the good things about this system, it's almost like our radio system. With, I don't know if you remember uh, the P25. It's do, interoperable. Uh, through several radio systems. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, no, the first one, the Motorola, was proprietary. Right. The second system, the P25, and that's the whole idea behind P25 radio systems, is that it's interoperable. In other words, you, it's not, there's no uh, proprietariness to the, the open system. Open source. Right. right. Yeah. And that's exactly what sure. this is. What, as long as it's on that milestone platform, it doesn't matter what kind of camera you put up there. So no matter what happens with those intersections that you're talking about, as long as we can, we'd have to put, buy the license for milestone to include those cameras, but you can put any camera on that system. It's it's an open source. It's not not open source. It's not proprietary. Understood. Now, in the bid specs, um, there is it's clearly this was like the original Hartford or the Hartford bid that we're sort of probably piggybacking on. Yeah. There's a lot of labor when it comes to IT labor and electrical labor for each item, which is whatever it's 16 or 18 deep. And it, it does say that the labor is HART, H-A-R-T, which I'm gonna, thinking is the Hartford labor. Uh, now, I don't know, is that the Hartford labor rate that they're using yes. for this? We and got Hartford's cost. In other words, whatever they gave to Hartford. Hartford was, because it's the first in this area, they got a lot of breaks. They got a lot of discounts. And we were able to piggyback off those discounts. In other words, we're getting Hartford's rates. If, it, if we hadn't, this would have been probably twice as much money. 
So I, specifically, I was talking about the certainly for the hardware, but this is for the labor. Mm -hmm. And is that the heart? What do we know? What what labor is that? Is that is that um, contract? Does, is Hartford the city of Hartford under a different labor contract than we might be? Can no. we use our electricians and our labor to, to no? Set no, these the, the, up this is strictly their electricians, their um, people that are going to be putting in the insulation. That's the cost. Those costs. I wouldn't want it any other way, to be honest with you, because these people are professionals. They know exactly what they're doing and how to do it. They're um, and not that I'm saying that our, our electrician couldn't wire something, but um, I don't. This is all based on the warranty and the and the, uh, the longevity of these cameras and what they're, and how they're doing it. So I wouldn't uh, mess around with that at all. And then on that thought, which is my last question, is can we talk about the longevity of of the of the system? It's a huge system, seven hundred thousand dollars system. So yes, and uh, you know they're talking about you talked about how you were very confident in its rely just reliability of the system, but of the hardware. What it, what experience has this company had in other areas about these cameras are lasting? Fill in the blank. Five years, eight years, ten years. They actually haven't destructed yet. We don't know how long they're going to last. Right, and that is the the situation right now. Hartford has their cameras. Has Hartford has their systems, and it's only been up for a couple of years. Right. But there is no problems. They haven't had any problem. As far as I know, they did have to replace a camera um, that broke down or whatever. But that's what that money is put aside for. They don't like I said. They don't have a maintenance system. But I give you a perfect example of what you're asking. Um, we had. I don't know if you remember. Uh, in brand new police building that was built in 2002. I mean, we've been in there now 16 years. I've heard of it. <laughs> we had problems with the doors. Yeah. I guess the way the doors were designed, it was di designed more for aesthetic reasons and not really for practical reasons. So for the first 10 years that we were there, we had no nothing but problems with those doors. The doors didn't shut, the doors didn't lock. One time they would stay, they'd stay partly open, so the security of the building was in jeopardy. Uh, one time, there was actually snow came into the building and one of our officers slipped and fell on the snow-covered uh, foyer. Anyways, so it, actually Mike Turner was the one who got a company to come in and fix those doors. It was expensive. It was $13,000 to fix those doors. This is the company that fixed those doors. We have never had an issue with that door again, and that's good seven, six, seven years ago. So what, uh, although it says Hartford one camera broke of, yeah. what, but they, is Hartford the only municipality that this company has installed these cameras in? Yeah, it's a Connecticut company. And they've only done one, I mean, in the entire nation, we're the second company to install this system. Of the second municipality. I believe they've they've installed systems, especially the private companies and businesses and stuff like that. Right. But this was the first municipal installation that I'm aware of. Okay. And so far, it's pretty good. And uh, the fact is, is that, that they didn't push that maintenance fee that a lot of other companies do. I I was kind of impressed by that. Understood. Thank you for your time. Chief, what's the time frame for this project? Once I get the approval, uh, there's, it's going to be quick, relatively quick, I would, I would hope. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank See you. Okay. Thank you. Um, seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have the state grant for purchase of physical services dump truck. <coughs> Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Motion to approve an appropriation from the capital non-reoccurring expenditure fund to purchase a large dump truck at the cost of $207,462.23 and authorize funding sources as follows. A, acceptance of grant with proceeds of $49,000. $86.05 and B, lease financing with proceeds of $158,376.18. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy? This, um, this opportunity came up. We, the staff applied for a grant and we're, um, we did receive the grant and it's up to council whether or not we accept it or not. We hadn't originally planned on purchasing another dump truck in this budget year but it came up unexpectedly. We talked about it at the workshop meeting that this we were replacing a Sterling truck 
that um, has um, some issues with it. So we're just looking now to see whether or not council is interested in accepting the grant and moving forward with purchasing a truck. Thank you. And we have Sally Katz, uh, from physical services director here to answer any questions. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Do you want to start with council questions? Already got them last time. Yeah. <laughs> we went over last time. We did. Okay. No questions. Oh. Councilor Rell. Um, well, I, why don't you indulge us with? I mean, I think there might be some people mm -hmm. in the audience who don't know what we're going to be talking about. This, well, there's two things. Um, it, as part of the VW uh, mitigation um, award, the state of Connecticut has received funds to be able to give grants to municipalities who are replacing diesel, old diesel trucks with newer, cleaner running vehicles. Uh, it is a one-time opportunity for this money um, as the settlement has just come through. The truck that we are uh, requesting to change is a uh, truck that has a motor that was, per that was built in 2005. It is a 2006 vehicle, so it is 13 years old, uh, approaching 14 years old. Um, I will say that we have um, been looking for sterling parts, and the parts are not readily available. Uh, we recently had to try to replace uh, part of the exhaust system on one of the trucks and we were able to find a part in Kentucky and we were told that it was the last one that was available. Um, as we discussed before, Sterlings are no longer made and while parts for certain um, aesthetic parts of the truck may be available, there are many parts that are no longer made. And so that is part of the reason why we are looking to replace this truck. There, some of the photos did take, um, most, uh, a lot of them were taken of the dump body, which has rusted out. And also, there are parts of the frame that have seen a degradation in the metal. These trucks are used all year round, even after every storm, through washing them. And as you saw with the dump bodies up and trying to get in there, the salt is a corrosive. It has gone through uh, parts of the truck. Again, we, this is a vehicle that has been on the road for 13 years. It's a vehicle that is also used during the leaf collection, through hauling out today, hauling snow, even though it was you know, long past the, the snowstorms. These trucks are used continuously for 12 months out of the year. And um, it is unfortunate that uh, the vehicles that we use are expensive. There's no getting away from that. We look to purchase vehicles off the state contracts where we would hope to get the best value and the best, the, the best cost. Um, but these vehicles are expensive. Um, they do last. Well, as I said, this vehicle uh, that we are currently maintaining is 13 years old and they go through a lot to base um, a, a decision to say that something has 50,000 miles on it the way that these trucks are used in town they don't go out of town they are being run throughout town and so you're not going to see an exorbitant amount of miles on this type of vehicle but what you are going to see is the, um, the wear and tear on the vehicle. And I would say that it's also lasted this long because of the fact that we do maintain our vehicles. We don't let them sit with the salt on them after storms. Uh, we don't uh, let them sit with the leaf material. We wash these trucks constantly. We are maintaining them. We do as much preventative maintenance on them as we can. We then, uh, when problems do arise, we try to work uh, and get them repaired as quickly as possible. So we are caretakers and stewards of the equipment that you have voted on for us to purchase because we understand that this is taxpayer money going for equipment that most people don't have to deal with on, a, on an everyday basis. 
and it is equipment that is technologically advanced now <clears throat> and expensive. And we, t we don't come to you asking for this frivolously. And so when we get an opportunity to defray a quarter of that cost and look at the fact that we are looking at a vehicle that is over 13 years old, my staff and I uh, really weighed that out and have um, come to you for this request um, in hopes that we would be able to, to work something out. Thank you. Are there any council questions now or comments? Deputy Mayor. Uh, Sally, thank you for your comments. Uh, you know, my goal this year was to try and either, you know, reduce or keep level the mm -hmm. uh, lease purchase in our budget this year, and this will definitely bring us way over. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons for not needing, you know, needing to replace this is because you say you can't get parts. Uh, I, I've said it before, uh, if you can't get parts for something, we now have 3D printers that can print parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Air Force is buying, is printing their own, using these 3D printers to print, uh, to get parts for F-16s, F-16s, and some of our other aircraft. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's got to be somewhere where we can get access to one of these 3D printers for something you can't get locally and, and speed up the process that way. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I honestly, you know, I, I can't vote for this tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. Understood. Anybody else? Councilor Forrest? Um, this is a tough one because you're, <laughs> you're, you're offered sort of a carrot um, in this particular purchase, and there is ongoing needs. I think that uh, although when we look at it a little bit more globally is this particular truck that's mixed in with all of the needs of the town, including all of the vehicles. And um, there's concern about the leasing component. Really, it's a financing component. And that is a broader concern than this particular purchase. But uh, some of the public discussed it today. And there is some merit to the sense of, like, how do you purchase ongoing operational costs and lease it out, which means there's a financing cost on top of that. So there is sort of a concern about getting that, the leasing component, the financing component of operate of really true operational um, equipment uh, on our books and, and how we sort of manage that. There's also something that sat a little bit funny with me as we had a very honest conversation the last time, and that was the, the destruction of, although an older truck, but a functional truck in order to meet the particular requirements of this particular grant money, which is mm -hmm. to, to remove the diesel and move over, which is a laudable goal. But I see that as more of a perfect use of the replacement when something is actually gone. And, and to destroy something that's gener generally functional, although I know that there are issues and completely believe all that you're presenting or all that's been presented to us is, is, a, tough, is a tough pill uh, when the purchase price is not more than, you know, more than simple, you know, petty cash. This is a large purchase. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the broader budgetary concerns. And then if we look at, this might be sort of the year of the fire truck, which, or trucks, which is over a million dollars in expense for, you know, two pieces of equipment. And then we sort of get right back on the schedule. So I think there's a real governance and a real weighing in this particular purchase. But on the scales of certainly there's lots of benefits, but weighing all the rest of the demands of our resources, I think I'm leaning toward I think we've got to hold off on this one until maybe another day. But I'm just certainly one person, but that's at least just sort of the analysis as I see it. Okay. Anybody else? I'm sure the Boy Scouts are thrilled with this conversation about a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool truck, though. <laughs> it's civic. But we're not getting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe next. But the fire truck, we are getting, and it's really cool, too. Councilor Latina. <laughs> Sally, I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, how many dump trucks are in the fleet right now? Uh, right now, um, there are, we have the, the chart here. 15. Um, yeah, there's 15. <laughs> I didn't want to miscount. So it's not like we're not going to have availability if we hold off? Um, it's not that we won't have availability. It's just if this, again, and everything is the what if situation. Um, you know, if we do have to take this truck out of the fleet, then we will be needing to either contract out when if we're talking during the snow period then we would be contracting out for snow removal in that area 
or trying to expand the current routes of other drivers than elongating times in between um, as, as quickly to remove snow. And again, also with um, the leaf pickup program, we would potentially be expanding that. But again, those are the what if situations. And it's not inoperable, it still works. It's just right. we're trying this to currently, replace yes. it. It, it, is, it is in service at this time. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Sally, thank you for all the information. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, seeing no other questions, all in favor? All opposed? No. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, the motion fails. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have a bid for the Solomon Wells House roof. This is an exciting meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, motion to award the Solomon Wells House roof bid to Youngwood developers at a cost of $209,125 with funds from the Solomon Wells House Capital Improvement Project account and the Capital Reserve account. Okay. Sally, you're still here. Are you I'm speaking still here. to this one? <laughs> All right, thank you. I'll be here for the next one, too. Over the next one. Uh, <laughs> um, the, Let me I'm, just interrupt, Dolores. Okay. Did you hear Councilor Lester seconded that motion? Okay, thank you. I wanted to make sure I got in there. So. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, Sally. For those of you who don't know, the Solomon Wells House has multiple roofs to it. Um, there are var uh, varying types of construction. They are gable roofs, flat roofs, and a number of different materials ranging from wood shingles to asphalt shingles, um, a rolling roof, and, and rubber membranes. And back in 2017, we did a study of the Solomon Wells House exterior. And uh, while we found that the roofing structure and along the gutters, the dormers, um, that it is beginning to degrade and that there are certain areas in the roof where um, I think as Kathy can attest that you can kind of see daylight. Um, and so in order to, again, uh, be the stewards of this property, we, um, decided to try to phase the renovations that need to be done on the house. And of course, the first where, where we want to start is with the roof, because if you secure the exterior and you make it watertight, then anything else that we do as far as any type of carpentry or exterior work or then work in the interior, it will be secure and it will be safe from water infiltration, rodents, and anything else to get into the house. Um, and so working with Carl Rothbart from Architectural Preservation, we developed a bid spec. We did a mandatory walkthrough of the, uh, of the, the project. We did receive a number of different bids. Um, they, were, they ranged in price. Um, and so we do, we're confident that the pricing that we have received for this um, will give us the product uh, that we are looking for in the end. And also knowing that this is, you know, a historic, and, and because it is a historic home in the historic district, we are replacing things in kind. So it's a, where there is the uh, cedar wood shingles, we will be placing the cedar wood shingles where there's the asphalt on some of the newer parts of it. So we are replacing things in kind as they are now. Thank you. Has this gone to the Historic District Commission yet, or is that uh, the next step? It was discussed, however, because we're doing it in kind, we don't have to go um, up to the full uh, meetings. But I have let the um, staff liaison know of this. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you, Sally. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. You're three up for again. three All tonight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bid for a salt shed. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I move to award the salt shed uh, foundation and site improvements based on a bid 
by the Ch to Chachio Brothers Inc. at a cost of $341,340.50 with funds from the Salt Shed Capital Improvement Project account and the Capital Reserve account. Second. Okay, okay we have a motion and a second. Um, Sally, Derek, welcome, Derek. Um, do you want to give an overview before we ask questions? Again, this project is to replace the salt shed that is used by physical services uh, throughout the winter time. Um, this is a project that we have been looking forward to doing for the past seven years, at least seven years since I've been here. Um, we have looked at alternative locations to move the salt shed. However, there are none, and we have not been able to find any other um, local or state um, office that would be willing to share uh, their current uh, product, so we really are on our own to replace a salt shed. Uh, we are looking to do this work prior to changes in any of the state regulations. We have been working with and we worked with DEP on replacing the salt shed because our current salt shed does not have um, the drainage and containment as the new one would. This is a slight change in the location of the salt shed. We had originally looked to replace it exactly where it is. However, due to some soil issues, we tried to move it uh, to see if we would get better soils. Um, we did not get significantly better soils, but there were some, so it was um, in our favor to cha slightly change the location. We uh, bid out uh, this we did a mandatory walkthrough we scoped out the project and we received nine 12 bids on it um, There was a base bid to do the work that would accompany the canopy and then um, And that is that is the project that we are looking to do at this point which would get us the new salt shed the remote uh, the, the new salt shed um, and the uh, appropriate site work for that shed um, so that we would be complete on that. Thank you. Are there council questions or comments? A quiet group, yeah. Deputy Mayor. Uh, Sally, the new shed, its capacity, will it be bigger or the same as the current? It's 2,000 tons, which is bigger. Bigger, okay. Yeah. It's a different shape. It's, mm. I was just asking, sorry, is it is it the same location, a little bit moved? Can you just comment on? Yeah, um, right now the salt, it's literally moved across <laughs> the, the, um, the, the yard, closer to the side where the, um, where the old uh, garage is. One more, Mayor, if I Go want. ahead, sure. And if we approve this night, what is the timing? We would start it. Um, this spring um, and get it done so that for the net for next season we would be complete Got it. thank you Councillor Hurley could you just explain the cost and how it increased over the last since the first time you guys came up here and the why it increased so much from that first time Want to go, go ahead. <laughs> Derek Greger, town engineer. Um, just to clarify, are we referring to the first bid for this work? Correct. Okay. Uh, as Sally said, we had opted. We only had three bidders last time. We had, had opted to step back and look at other areas of the site where we might get better soil conditions. Um, as she said, we really didn't find much better soil conditions, although we did find better grade uh, considerations. And in talking with staff further, we felt this orientation and location of the structure would be better than what was originally proposed. Um, as far as costs, uh, it's very comparable to the cost we had received last year. Um, we did have a lower bid uh, in the last summer for a project, although that was lower, lower to the point where we would have had to do some investigation into if that was uh, acceptable bid or not. So cost-wise, the second low bidder was approximately the same as this one is now. You know, it's all a matter of when you bid late in the year, as we did last year, which was an opening in July, you either get people who don't have work for the rest of the year and they bid low because they want it, or they have a lot of work and they bid high because they really don't need it. Um, I think we were kind of falling into the, the former with that, where we had some bidders that were competitive. We, we did it again this 
winter, which is usually the best time to do it because you get the most competition. Obviously, we got 12 bidders this time. Low bid still, you know, in that 340 range. Um, however, you know, that, that is within our estimate. Our estimate was 345. They came in at 341. Um, up to 341,000, so that was our expectation. They are within our expectations of what we expected to get. Okay, one more? Yeah. Since it's in the, uh, in wetlands, could you just explain how to, how to keep the salt uh, out of the wetlands? Yeah, and the way it, this If it escapes from... Yep. Uh, currently, the existing shed is three-sided, so there's a lot of exposure to the atmosphere, a lot of salt where we load is outside of the shed area that it is now, so there's a lot of direct salt runoff into the wetland. With the new structure, it's an enclosed building except for a 20-foot wide by 38-foot door that will have the ability to keep the salt uh, away from the elements to the extent we can. And the site is graded so that when we do have runoff, if there is salt that is in it, it will go through a grass swale flow into a small sedimentation basin, and then overflow to the wetlands. So DEP was very uh, favorable um, to the project for the reason of the structure itself, as well as providing better accommodations to keep the salt out of the wetlands. That small sediment basin can be periodically dug out and maintained by staff um, to keep it on site. And this project had gone through a local and the wetlands uh, approval for that. Thanks. Anything else? Councilor Rao? I'm sorry, this is the first I'm hearing of the moving of the, the salt shed. Now, we originally, it was going to go on the same footprint as the current one, but maybe move just a little bit just because it's a, the concrete footing is a little bit bigger than the wood that it's currently there. <clears throat> you mentioned the old garage. Whereabouts? So if I'm facing the entrance to the... Uh, transfer station and the building is on our left and then further to the left is the uh, uh, overhang for the pumps whereabouts would the salt shed be in relation to that it would be more behind the pumps in the brick building to your left closer to I-91 so we've rotated it about 90 degrees so now instead of it running more uh, north-south it's running more of an east-west orientation so is that where the the plows are kind of lined up right now? Not the plow trucks, but the plows in front of that that building right there. It'll 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 be off the end of that building, about fifty feet from the dog pound. If you know where the dog pound is, it'll be about fifty feet off of okay. the dog pound. Would there be enough foliage, or I'm putting my hat from HDC on because of you know what's the visual impact? of this going to be for either 91 Marsh Street, Old Weathersfield? The visual impact, and we discussed this with HDC, there, you're going to see it, and you're going to see the building. And the pitch of the roof of the building is such that we didn't go with a barrel type. We went with more of a barn-looking mm -hmm. type of, of material. Um, but the, the structure it is what it is. It's a rather large structure, and you are going to see it. What you will see, though, is instead of a dilapidated, falling down <laughs> structure, you'll see something that is being well maintained. And um, remember, this is old Weathersfield. They right, like and that's and we had this, and we <laughs> we had these conversations. Um, you know, yes, there is there is some foliage there. There are trees. There's a tree line. There are other things, but there is no getting away. You will you will see this building. And then. Take me back a couple months ago. The color was white, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All white. Is there an option? Uh, in a, ever since voting on that, I've always you know kind of second guessed my vote. Right. And then I drive down the you know Merritt Parkway. I see some brick structures. I go down the Garden State Parkway. I see these enormous, but you know they have more money than we do right. somehow. Um, they're doing it right. But not the town, I mean by the state funding on the Garden State Parkway. Uh, is there any way we can get a cover that doesn't look like it's a, you know, the roof of a Astrodome or something like that? There are, there are different color options. However, we don't want to go too dark because the light does allow you know, also some daylight in the actual structure itself. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are more towards the beige tones um, available to us, and it's something that we can. Is there a cost Did we, difference? Well, we've already. We haven't purchased. You're right. We haven't made it. We, we got the approval last summer for the purchase of the canopy. We haven't done it yet. Um, they did have other options, uh, green, beige, earth tones. Um, I don't recall offhand, to be honest with you, if there was added cost to go with another color. I don't believe there was, but we'd have to confirm that with the manufacturer. I, I would just, you know, on a you know preference of you know visual, mm-hmm. I would you know welcome any kind of uh, additional. Uh, investigation Non-white. whether or not you know if it does, if it, is there's little to no additional cost great um, but uh, if you could take a look to see if sure. there are other options out there for that yes color was one thing HDC did not comment on <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason for that any other questions Councilor Latina in reading this particular uh, resolution, do I understand that the CIP reserve fund is going to be then um, seventeen thousand dollars less, so that we can add that into this? Yes. Yes, that's correct. And so then the total cost of this project would be five hundred fifty-seven thousand one hundred eighty dollars. Uh, no. Um, wait, let me just look at. We're gonna take uh, out of the salt shed project $324,204 and out of CIP reserve $17,135. So the total cost of a new salt shed with the foundation, with the canopy, with everything is what? Three, oh, with the canopy? Oh, okay, with just the foundation, for those two numbers, it's 341000 Three hundred and forty for the base bid, and then the canopy cost. Do we? The canopy cost was uh, it's listed here. Um, it's two hundred fifteen thousand eight hundred forty. So your your first oh. comment is correct. The total oh, cost sorry. is five fifty seven. Okay, I'm going to be voting no because I think this is an outrageous amount of money for something like this, and I understand the complications, but I'm not willing to authorize this. So thank you so much for your hard work. Hey, Councilor Forrest. Thanks. I think on balance, um, the requirements of the salt shed, and, and one of the major things I'm concerned about is if we don't act now, what are we risking in the future, whether it's a new location for the salt shed, actually having to purchase land to then put it on because we've had trouble finding alternative locations, and then, of course, the environment and the current condition of the salt shed, which does appear that it was built at the time of the settlement of the colony of Weathersfield uh, for all the pictures that we saw in it. Um, I think that I, I don't want to risk it being uh, 300 and some odd thousand now and then ending up to be 600,000, two, three, not too long from now. And I think that that risk is real. Uh, on, the, on the second side, is this has been an ongoing conversation for seven years and uh, not something that is new, just came up to us. We know it's been an ongoing need, uh, and uh, it seems like now is the right time and the appropriate time to be able to act on this particular. As we had in previous comments, of course, there is always concern regarding the budget, which we haven't approved all of the items here today, but this is one that clearly has had its longevity. It clearly has its need. It clearly has its risk if we don't act now, which may be much more painful in the future. And so I think now I would encourage my fellow councilors to vote yes in order to, in some respects, put this to bed with Councilor Rell's consideration to the caller, which I think was legitimate, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, move the town forward with some some good new infrastructure, which uh, in its current condition, um, I'm unwilling to allow the environment to suffer, especially if there is any type of minor flooding down there. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Dolores, did you get that? Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank Thank you, you. Derek. Thank you, Sally. Appreciate your time. Okay, we have... um, some resolutions for introduction and they will be acted on at our second meeting in March 
And we'll move to the minutes. Do I have a motion for the January 22nd regular meeting? Motion approved the minutes of January 22nd. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right, are there any um, corrections to those minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, we have the meeting minutes of February 4th. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of February 4th. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, are there any changes to these minutes? Okay, see. I have one. Oh. oh. Did you know someone needs them? <laughs> Try to find it now. Okay. Okay, on uh, page five, Dolores. Mm -hmm. The January 22nd one, where we talk about the um, the dump truck, uh, I said bring an outside contractor. It wasn't to help them fix the vehicles; it was to bring outside contractors in to do the snow plowing. Okay. Any other changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention, Dolores. Okay, thank you, Councilor Latina. Um, and we will move back into public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, it's amazing. I moved to this town in 1973, 73, February 1973. At that time, the garbage was being collected by the town. They would come to the backyard, they would take the garbage, it was great. A few years later, it went private. I've been coming right here now for a long time and I, I, I see the discussion that, that takes place. A truck 50,000 50, miles, only 13 years old, 14, whatever it is, they're replacing it or come right here, they want to replace it. I have an old truck, I never washed it and it's still going, 1998. It's beautiful, 150,000 miles. It's amazing. How can it be? You take care of a truck and 13 years it needs to be replaced. I never take care of my truck and it's still going. Is it time to, to take physical services private? Have we ever checked it out to see if, if the private can do a better job for us and save money? After all, every single year, the tax keep on going up. You have to wonder why. And really, you know, why do they go up all the time? And like I said last time, too, that uh, basically you take a similar job in private versus government. The one in private costs, what, 17% less than the one in public? With no accountability. That's sad. Going back to Morrison Avenue, I guess. I've been complaining all the time. Lesser and, uh, and Mr. L, they came last year, and they agreed with me. Something needs to be done. People go too fast. Nothing is happening. How long does it take? The only answer I got is, is too many stop signs. Be requesting meetings, and I guess, I guess, you know, next, uh, next month we have a new manager. Probably, probably we're gonna get someplace. But how long does it take? I see stop signs where you don't even need it. At the at job lot restaurant, at a store right here, when you try to come out, there is a stop sign for whatever reason. You can say it's private. We don't have anything to do. But I'm sure that, that the site for that plan was, was, must be reviewed by the, the engineers right here, by the town. And yet, every, you know, the stop signs, it's there. Sometimes I feel like it's like, Wow, I should steal it and put it on Morrison Avenue, but that would be against the law. <laughs> it's another thing too, you know, 
Every time we have a meeting, we see the same people. I've been asking a lot of questions over the past 10 years. I've been retired for 10 years, and I never get an answer. I made a comment regarding now, about a month ago, uh, the, the driveway and the Walker Hill Road and the driveway of uh, the school. Those signs are completely atrocious. There is a sign at uh, Ridge Road and, 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 what is it, Prospect? You cannot even see it. I made a comment a couple years ago that coming out of uh, Route 15 into Silas Dean, you know, on that, on that ramp, you have to yield for the, for the traffic coming from Hartford. And I said, why? When you come from Hartford to Wethersfield, there is only one lane. And then that lane has to go, can go right on the ramp, or it can get, go left on Hartford Avenue, and then two more keep on going straight. Why? Did anybody ever check with the state? I know it's a state road, but did anybody ever check? Probably not. So to me, the past 10 years, even though you know, I, I go home and I get all excited and it takes me a long time to go to bed, but it, it's a waste of time. I mean, we come right here, we ask the question, and we don't even have an acknowledgement that says, you know what, Mr. Colantonio, we saw those signs, and I think you're right, or I think you're wrong, and we're not, we're not going to do anything about it. No. What's the incentive of the people out there? Whenever I talk to them, says, why don't we go to the town hall and, you know, complain a little bit? You know what they tell me? says, no, why? They never listen. Is that the, the idea? Is that what we want other people to think about it? And now even like, you know, this food. Are these people in Wethersfield that need food share? I hope they get a break on the taxes because those are the people that need it. My time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? <clears throat> Good evening again. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. The earlier discussion you had on the uh, federal employees, uh, what caught my ear was that nobody came and asked for a benefit out of how many people we have that are federal employees that were under that, lay uh, that uh, furloughed situation. Nobody came forward, which, which, you know, I saw people on television complaining but nobody in Weathersfield. We must have a wealthy group of people. We must, they must not need it, or those others were hoaxes and making, making a lot of television uh, broadcasting about how tough it was. Maybe it wasn't really for them. Um, with the chief talking about his cameras and how we should put $8,000 a year for repairs or for some kind of upkeep going forward. Um, that's just another eternal life program that we're getting into. I do think we need, need cameras, but maybe, he's, maybe we need to find other ways to finance that $8,000 instead of adding on to the budget. Maybe find cost cutting, you know, some place to reduce costs. We never hear about that from you folks. It's like the state of Connecticut. We all hear about revenue, revenue, the need for revenue and revenue. We don't hear about, oh, we, we're going to cut here, we're going to slash over here, we're going to take another whack over there, and, and we're not going to increase taxes. I don't hear that from you people, and I don't hear it from those jerks that we have up in Hartford either. Every one of them. But then here we go, here in Wethersfield. We have the Salomon Wells House. It wasn't long ago, it wasn't long ago, you, you had to do something to the basement wall, which was a lot of money. There was no cost analysis done by the town of Wethersfield. Should we do it? Shouldn't we do it? Is it well worth it? All of that kind of stuff. I didn't hear anything about this one either. And, uh, you, you, you know, you know, you just keep throwing money, 
throwing money with no anything to back it up. Where is backing? You bought, or at least you went on contract to purchase a property in town called the, the, the uh, Keisha Farm. You didn't supply us with anything to support your price. You held back your appraisal, and you continue to hold it back. And you should have had it out to the public like any other town would do, but you had to hold it back. And then as I started looking into what other properties cost and other properties that sold, I see a tremendous difference in, in what sold and what you're purchasing for. Matter of fact, it's more than double the price. And then I see properties that are now on the market. And those properties are much less than what you're going to pay for the Keisha farm. There makes, there's no sense in that at all. I recommend and I urge you to go back and renegotiate that to, to what, the, what property is worth today. I've read a number of them. I'm going to read some more to you because I don't think you folks care. Now, here we go. Down in Deep River, Connecticut, <coughs> a house, 48 acres of land. I mean... $850,000. I'm sure you all took a look at that last night when I sent it out to you and others. And that's brand new on the market. I mentioned a moment ago uh, at the earlier session of public comment, the Fondella farm down in Berlin uh, that was $15,700 an acre. It's for sale, and it just came on the market 17 days ago. Uh, 870, uh, $87,000 and 93 South Main Street in East Windsor, 38 acres, a little larger than your Keisha farm, $800,000. That's 20,800 bucks an acre, and you're paying $75,000 an acre. I hope you'll be able to support this once you put your appraisal out. Then, of course, we still have the property down on, on New Britain Avenue right here in Rocky Hill. 26.8 acres. It's only five or six acres less than the Keisha farm. Same neighborhood. It's only three or four miles away. Okay, finish and, up, and, and, Mr. And the price on that is, up. And the price, yes, madam, I'll wrap it up. And the price on that is $900,000. It's only been on the market for 27 days. And, and that's priced at $33,000 an acre. But you've gone on contract for 75. dollars No wonder these dump trucks cost so much money. They know you, could tell you don't have the ability to analyze anything, you just accept what Thank they, you, are, what they say that you're going to pay. Thank you very much, madam. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? I have to my <laughs> I just put my notepad away. <laughs> Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. So uh, I had a little sidebar with Amy tonight before the meeting, and she was giving me a hard time about my statement I made where all you guys ever do is vote yes, spend money, spend money. So I guess I have to make a, an adjustment. I'm not going to call it an apology, but, <laughs> you know. Two meetings in a row, Tom. I, Two meetings in a row. <laughs> you know, I, I come to these meetings, and I speak my piece, and I go home at night, and I'm like Gus. I can't fall asleep at night. I'm really irritated sometimes. I told my wife, I don't even know why I go down there. Nobody listens to me. And so now I got a glimmer of hope. I mean, you, you, you really oh, messed brother. up. You should have <laughs> you should have just voted yes for everything. I would have got frustrated and Tom, went away. Do you want a stop sign by any chance, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> on a roll. I need a stop sign. Uh, but, I, you know, seriously, um, I don't want you to think that I just make all this stuff up that I come up with. I spent most of the day today researching sterling trucks and surfing the internet on where parts were available and where they weren't available. I went to a truck service shop, told them, hey, I got a fleet of sterling dump trucks. You know, the guy says, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, he said, they're a piece of junk. Well, so I explained the situation and he said, yeah, you know, several years ago, yeah, it was a real dire situation and it has vastly improved. Uh, he gave me a name of a uh, local 
parts dealer uh, that moved that used to have uh, I guess it was Brainerd Ford or the Ford truck dealer on the corner of Airport Road and that individual is now over at Monaco Ford in Glastonbury and they've set up a heavy truck division and uh, the guy's well versed in sterling parts sourcing so yeah uh, like Sally said there was they needed a muffler and they had to get one from Kentucky well welcome to the 2019s you know you you order something on the other side of the country or a different country and you put it on a FedEx plane and it's here at 10 o'clock the next morning and you know it's much the same as getting the part from AutoZone so yeah there's some more costs involved but the parts are available um, you know I just don't want you to think that I'm just making this stuff up I I did the legwork and like I said it a couple weeks ago I know everybody up here doesn't have the you know spare time to go out and play around with that kind of stuff but um, anyways I appreciate your your uh, listening to me um, one last comment um, I was at planning and zoning and I spoke about the color of that salt shed and you guys got to realize that is just going to be an absolute monstrosity it's over 40 feet tall and you know people used to go down the I-91 and say oh it's right near Weathersfield Cove now they're gonna say it's right where that big white tent is and thing is just gonna be huge and uh, I don't know how the historic district approved that I don't understand why planning and zoning said you know I said geez can't you pick any other color but white it's gonna just stick out like a sore thumb and I didn't think that's what Weathersfield wanted to be remembered about thank you Thank you. So anybody else would like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing no one, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you and have a good night. Take care. Now, it's like right off at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ate a... Uh, I told you I ate a buckshot last time, right? Get into a buckshot? I said.